Hello, uh, my name is Mark and today I thought I'd share with you guys a project I've been developing in Java and that is I've been making Connect4. Um, it's just a desktop application, uh, currently it just runs in the console but I'm hoping that I'll um, build that out and as I develop it I'm hoping to share, share my progress with you guys. So the, the methodology of the, of the program is that we have a global game board variable and that is a two a 2d array which represents all of the spaces in a normal connect four board um and then we use different numbers to represent the different counters of each player and we have methods which are going to be used to scan the board in order to determine if a player has won the game or not. Um, in this video I thought I'd just I'd go over some of a few of the, the first methods of kind of like setting up the game and what happens when the game when the program is first loaded. So um, the first things you'll notice is the scanner and the random class from the Java utils library. Um, the reason we have those in is the random class is going to be used to determine at the start of the game which player is going to go first. And the scanner class is going to be used to get input from the user via the console. So we'll put up a prompt to say, where would you like to place your counter? And then the user will enter a numerical value and it will represent a slot on the board. And then from there, the program will determine whether or not that slot's viable and, you know, place the counter, etc. So, um, as I previously mentioned, this is the this is the game board here. Um, the I decided to make this variable global because um, in the future I hope to develop this project into I don't know what would you call it. I I want to make it big. I want to have more classes. I want to add more functionality. Um, ideally, in the long term, um, I'll build a server so that. Um, you can play with opponents anywhere uh, on any device and um yeah so the reason for doing that is because this game board will be need to be will need to be accessed by the server as well as by the main class if i make the variable a local variable um i won't have that functionality so it has to be made global um moving on the next thing we have is this um, constructor call. So all this line is doing is it's creating a new object. However, we don't really need to use the object. The only reason I'm doing this is because I want to call the constructor of the main class. Um, the reason for doing that is because I don't want any of my methods to be static. So um, I thought it'd be easier if I just called, if I created a new object right at the start of the program, and then basically this method here acts as my main method so the bulk of the programming the bulk the bulk of the code is actually within here rather than in the main method and again that's just because if if any any additions any additional classes i add to this project need to access any methods within this class it might not be helpful for them all to be static they may need to be access, accessed in a non-static context so I thought I'll keep things consistent and just create an object right off the bat and have everything as non-static in order to make things a bit easier for myself and avoid confusion. Because I've had that before where I've just, you know, ran into that problem where everything needs to be static or some things are static, some things aren't. It gets really muddly. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to determine uh, who's, go, who's going to go first. And we do that by calling the set player method. Now the set player method here, you'll notice first off, um, it's return type is integer. So what that means is it's going to return in a numeric value, numerical value, a whole number. And for our purposes, it's going to return either the number one or the number two to signify whether player one or player two is going to go first. Now, the way that we determine that is we use the next int method of the java random class so this random class like i said it's built by 
the Oracle developer. This is not my own function. I can I just imported this. And I'm using the next int method to generate a random integer. Now the way this works is is the it you know it, it runs an algorithm and it will spit out any value between zero and the bound that you set. So you see this this parameter that says bound here. Uh, this um, is the bound that I'm referring to. Um, how am I going to word this? So the the method works by it it will pick a random number within the given range of zero up to the bound, but it won't include the actual bound itself. So in this instance, the method will only return the value zero or one. It won't return two. And that's quite handy since there's, you know, there's only two players. So say, say it did include the bound, say it could return the value two, I would simply just type in the value one. Um, so that again, can you, in this case, we only want one of two outcomes. There aren't any other options. You can't have a player three. So what, what does that mean? What it means is, is that um, all we need to do is we need to determine if the value is equal to zero and if the value is not equal to zero. So in this in this case, it will be one, but it, it could equal anything um, based on this code's execution. So this method will return the value, either the value zero or one. If it returns zero, uh, the if statement is then going to check, okay, is it returned to zero? Yes, is it equal to zero? Sorry, yes, it is. Oh, okay, it's player one's go. If it returns one, it will check it and it'll say, okay, it's not equal to zero, and it'll be player two's turn. If for some reason it's spat out the number four, um, it would still say it's player two's turn. If it returned any value other than zero, it would say it's player two's turn. But since we've limited the number of possible values it could be, um, that isn't an issue. Uh, finally, we just simply return this value so that we can, uh, you know, so we've actually got what we wanted out of the, fun out of the method. So that's that one done. Um, the next next thing we have is we have this boolean which it, it ties to this loop. So what the loop's doing is is the loop's going to contain sort of what I'd call the game state. So that means all of the code which is run, which needs to be run in order for the game to work is held within this loop. And as a result, what keeps the loop going is the boolean statement. Uh, the boolean variable, sorry. So as long as the boolean remains true, the loop will continue to run. And as long as the loop continues to run, the game will continue to be playable. So you can continue to make moves. Um, yeah, you continue. You can continue to place counters as long as the loop, loop runs and the, root, the loop runs as long as the game continues variable is equal to true. The only things that will make the variable equal to false. Oh, I'm going to sneeze. I'm not to sneeze. Oh my god, I'm trying so hard not to sneeze. Oh. Okay, I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. Um, so yeah, the only thing that's gonna make the variable return false is if connect four is achieved, or if the game board is full. I think to be fair, I think that's a lie. I don't think I've actually coded that yet, but theoretically, um. Those are the con those are the two conditions which should make it go false. I've set up um, checks to make sure that the make sure that connect four hasn't been achieved. That's all done, but I forgot to check that the game board wasn't full. That's my bad. So I need to do that. Um, and yeah, um, I thought I think I'll have a have a little break. Split this up a little bit. This video is getting a little bit long. Um, so the next video will be discussing actually the logic of the game is fairly simple. Like I said, it's just determine where the player wants to move to. Um, there's a little bit of validation. Because we've got to make sure that that move is a valid move, that they can actually go there. And then after that, it's just check that the player who's just moved hasn't won and then just repeat the processes. Yeah, you know, it's fairly straightforward.
Um, I hope you've enjoyed this. Uh, I do apologise if it's very... Is it, uh, the delivery style... I'm going to use the word interesting. If you found my delivery style interesting, I do apologise. This is very new to me. Um, but yeah, no, I hope, I hope it's helpful and informative. And if you want to follow along or, you know, maybe work on some of the um, extensions that I've discussed, then yeah, go for it.